Um, thank you so much, uh, Bank Secretary. And um, I'm going to stand on the protocol that was earlier mentioned, so I'll, I will observe it. So I'll start by uh, saying that uh, all the distinguished guests and the esteemed guests, the leaders of the districts, and the valued members of the Mbarara City and Ankore. I don't know, is it Ankore or Ankore? Okay. A very good morning to all of you. Murere Muta Basebo Nabanyabo. I wish I could continue. So, let me begin by saying that uh, the Bank of Uganda is very, very grateful to the leadership and to the residents of, of Mbarara and the greater Ankore sub-region for the very warm welcome and the participation in today's town hall meeting. Uh, we want to thank in particular those who joined us yesterday as we explained the role of Bank of Uganda and our approach to fulfilling our mandate. You see, we value town hall meetings so much because they inform our stakeholders about the work of the central banks and also its impact and also provides an opportunity to address any queries about Bank of Uganda, but importantly, to actively engage on your valuable feedback on what we do. The first female president of Ireland, called Mary Therese Winfred Robinson, once said, quote, to make progress, we have to build a multi-stakeholder process, harnessing appropriate uh, energies, unquote. Similarly, in Bank of Uganda, we believe in multi-sector or multi-stakeholder solutions, leveraging on diverse perspectives and collective energy of individuals and groups to drive progress. Therefore, your questions, your comments, and opinions are very essential in improving our performance in serving all Ugandans. And so we are very eager to engage in an open and candid discussion about Bank of Uganda uh, with you today. I know this started yesterday, but we need to continue this engagement so that we hear from you, the district leadership, um, what your views are on this. There was also an American famous public administra administration authority called James Queen Wilson. He once said, quote, Agencies differ in two main perspectives, or in two main respects. The first one is, can the activities of their operations be observed? And then the other one, can the results of those activities be observed? So the issue is, can you observe the activities of the operators? And can you observe the results of these activities? I think these are the questions that we need to discuss today. So at the Bank of Uganda, we approach these questions with transparency and accountability as we execute our mandate. Transparently communicating the central bank, particularly its governance, policies, outcomes, and the official relations do foster clarity and it does reduce uncertainty and we believe that it does improve the policy 
outcomes. So in this way, this approach aims to secure public support, preserve operational independence, and enhance policy effectiveness. We also recognize that central bank independence hinges on transparency, emphasizing the importance of ensuring that the public understands our policies and actions. So, and building on that, as Bank of Uganda, we are very pleased that this bank, Bank of Uganda, stands among the very few central banks. The last count I had was about 10 out of all the central banks in the world who have reviewed under the new voluntary central bank transparency code by the IMF, International Monetary Fund. So there are only the, not more than 10 central banks who have voluntarily done that, and Bank of Uganda is among them. So these findings commend the Bank of Uganda's robust communication policy and strategy, recognizing the commitment to transparent communication and active public engagement such as this. So this is where we stand out from the rest of the world. We encourage such communication, transparency, candid discussions with all the stakeholders, hearing from them, I mean, their concerns about the central bank, proposing solutions, and then we have a dialogue on that. So this morning, I'm going to provide an overview of the Bank of Uganda's work uh, in order to set a stage for the open discussion that we are going to have later on. You know, our mission, like you might have had yesterday, is to ensure price stability and a healthy financial system supporting Uganda's socioeconomic transformation. And this aligns with the National Vision 2040, which is a transformed Ugandan society from peasant to modern and a prosperous country. So our central responsibility is to uphold and enhance uh, the stability of the Uganda shillings value. We strive to protect the purchasing power of our money, aiming for consistent with the prices, especially the non-food and non-energy commodities. Because of course there are some prices like Matoke. If it decides to shine and the output of Matoke comes down, certainly the price has got to go up. Now you may ask me, what can Bank of Uganda do about that? So this is the discussion that we're going to have. And that's why I said we really focus so much on non-food and non-energy prices. Because there are some acts of nature that the central bank cannot control. But over the long run, we ensure that even the prices of those commodities that are affected by acts of nature their prices should be consistent with our medium-term inflation target. You're all aware that a rapid uh, price increase is due to mostly heightened demand for goods and services, given the available supply. So you find that relative to the available supply, the demand is sometimes high. That's why when the supply of matoke reduces and the demand does not reduce the price goes up it's obvious so what we try to do is to manage demand to some extent in order to bring it in line with the available supply especially for the non-food and the non-energy commodities so what we do we try to manage the money flow and the borrowing costs, thus aligning demand with the available goods and services to stabilize the price. So sometimes you wonder when we release our monetary policy statement and we're saying that we have raised the central bank rate from 9.5 to 10 percent, 
So you sometimes wonder, are these guys talking to themselves or what? But we'll have a discussion on what that means later on. So price stability enables individuals to plan and sustain their living standards. Because you might be wondering, so what is this thing about price stability? So price stability encourages savings and investments, hence economic growth. When this is spread to benefit the monanchi, socioeconomic transformation becomes possible. Now, when you have rapidly increasing prices, it becomes difficult to keep your money in a financial institution, particularly if the interest rate that you are earning from your deposit in a financial institution is not as high as the rate of inflation. So for example, if you are only getting 10% from your deposit in a commercial bank, and inflation is 30%, certainly your deposit in a financial institution is losing its purchasing power. So people will tend to move out money from financial institutions to begin buying what we call inflationary hedges. You can buy pigs, goats, land, and what have you. All right, because you want to preserve the value of your money. But unfortunately, as you buy that, the multiplier impact of that investment is not as great as if you had left that money in a bank. Because in a bank, somebody else is able to borrow that money to go and invest and generate economic growth which is going to create employment and improve on the livelihoods of the people. So but when people begin to withdraw money from financial institutions because inflation is, is rising very fast and they begin to speculate buying, you know, these inflationary hedges, things like land and what have you, you are reducing the capacity of the financial sector to generate growth, employment, and improve the life of the people. So that's why the central bank ensures that prices are stable, that when they rise, they don't rise so much to make you uh, come up with drastic decisions about your investment opportunities. So by so doing, um, we are aware that if you look at the poor, for example, the capacity of the very, very poor people to hedge against inflation is very, very limited. It's limited because they have a narrow range of assets. If they have money in a bank, maybe the other asset they have is guts, right? So if inflation goes up, now assuming even they don't have money in the bank and they're keeping it under the mattress, and inflation goes up, it means that if they were able to buy 10 bunches of matoki, right, with 200,000 shillings last year, all right, they can only buy fewer bunches of matoki this year because the price has gone up. Even non-food commodities, right, the purchasing power of their money will come down. And because they're not well diversified in terms of their assets, they end to be worse off than everyone. So it affects the socioeconomic transformation that we are talking about. We also oversee the licensing, regulation, and the supervision of financial institutions, including commercial banks, credit institutions, and micro deposit taking institutions, to ensure their safe operations and to foster customer trust and uphold ethical business standards. We, of course, aim to curb financial crimes, enforce consumer protection, and here by consumer protection we mean the laws that are made to protect the customers, particularly or the consumers, from fraudulent business practices and defective products. Don't go for these dangerous goods and services. Those are defective products. Like the CEO of the Deposit Protection Fund said, I am with these guys going around that Give me one million, I will pay you two million after one month. Ask them, who regulates you? Do you have a license? Ask those questions. I know the profit is very, very tempting. 
particularly when you are looking for money, it's very tempting, but at the same time, the risk is very high. And when the risk materializes, you really, really suffer a big loss. So you need to be very careful about that. And also as a central bank, we encourage fair treatment of customers by these institutions. So the Bank of Uganda supervises these institutions, ensuring that only adequately capitalized and professionally managed institutions obtain and maintain operating licenses. So anybody else who is coming and they are not regulated, they don't have a license, and they don't have any capital, they are suspect. They are suspect. So watch out. And these guys are, in, are not in short supply. There are very many of them. Particularly these days, people are looking for a quick kill. They will come. So be very careful. So our commitment lies in enhancing the management of financial institutions for accountability and mainly protecting the interests of the depositors. As a central bank, we are concerned about the safety of the deposits, customers' deposits. That's what we really try to ensure that they are protected because